Hi there! We are going to explore putting a square wave into a low pass filter as a quick getting started tutorial for Circuit Lab. When you start the editor, you are automatically in build mode. On the left, you'll see the build box, which has all the circuit elements you can use. We click on the voltage function generator, which is going to make our square wave. Then we click somewhere on the grid to place it in our circuit. Then we add a ground because all circuits have to have a ground to simulate properly. Now we'll add a couple of resistors. The currently selected element is red, and I can rotate it by pressing R and I can drag these resistors around to place them where I want them. Now let's put a capacitor in. So to wire these elements up, you can just put your mouse over any of the terminals and click and drag to extend a wire out to wherever you want. And in just a few clicks, it's all wired up. Now that I have my circuit, I can use the mouse wheel to zoom and I can hold down control while I drag to pan around my schematic. Now let's name some of these nodes. So we click name node and put this bubble with its little point on the wire of interest. Now I can double click and I can call this one in drop another one and call it out. Now I can double click the resistors to bring up the parameters and change their values. I set this one to 330 ohms and R2 to 220 ohms and set the capacitor to 1U. The U means micro for 1 microfarad. I can set up the voltage function generators parameters too. We can set the DC offset to 5, leave the frequency at 1000 Hz and make it a square wave. The amplitude is 1, so with the DC offset it's going to be a square wave changing between 4 and 6 volts. The circuit's done, so let's click simulate here at the bottom. First, we see the DC simulation mode, and if I click run DC solver, it tells us that the simulation is complete. Now, it says I can click any wire or terminal to track its value, so I'll click on in and out to track those voltages, and the calculated voltages appear. Notice I can also probe around the circuit, just hovering my mouse over any point and quickly see the voltages and currents in the lower right corner of the screen. Now let's run a time simulation and see the square waves. First, we've got to tell it how long to run a simulation for. We had a 1000 Hz square wave, which is a 1 millisecond period, so let's simulate for 10 milliseconds so we can see several cycles. Just type 10m into the box, and it knows that little m means milli. We have to pick a simulation time step, and a good start would be to simulate for 1 1000th of the total simulation run, so just type 10u with u for micro. Now we again pick what outputs to plot, so we click in and out, and you see it adds those to the outputs list. Then we click run time domain simulation, and in just a second, we get a plot. Now, we get a lot of the exponential RC behavior here, so let's try changing the capacitor size to see what happens. We click Build, then double-click the capacitor and change it to 0.1U. Back to Simulate, then Run Time Domain Simulation. And now we see a lot more square-looking output signal. To get a close-up view, we can drag on the graph to zoom in. Okay, cool. Let's go and save our circuit. Hit Control s and it asks for a name. Let's say Square Wave into Low Pass Filter. Hit Enter, and it tells us that our circuit was saved. Notice the name changes in the upper right-hand corner. We can click on that and it takes us out to the circuit page. Now we can click Make Public so other people can look at our experiment. And now we get URLs that we can share so other people can give it a spin. That's the basics of Circuit Lab. We only got a chance to play with the first few rows of the build box, and there's a lot more you can do with Circuit Lab. So head to the homepage and try out a few of our example circuits.